Hi guys, um, solar installers in the regional areas are really sometimes doing it tough in terms of hard work because you go long distances, it's extra hot, etc. So today we have Will Redfern and Will is from New South Wales Country Solar. So as the name says, he installs in New South Wales Country area. And he has a lot of good stories because we've already talked a little bit about it. So welcome to the podcast, Will. Welcome, Marcus. Yeah. Thank you. So you've been silly enough to go from electrical into solar. Um, yes. Yeah. And you've been riding the solar coaster for how long? Yeah. Um, it's about eight or nine years now. So uh, relatively new into our business, um, the solar thing came along. Um, it was another thing that I got got the ticket and thought I'll add it to part of our um, portfolio in the business and uh, it soon, well, after the first couple of years, it's pretty much became the biggest part of our business now. So um, it's, yeah, it's it takes up probably 60% of our workforce is, is full-time solar. So you do what? You do solar and electrical work? Yeah, so uh, I'm an industrial sparky, uh, in commercial sparky by trade. Um, did my time at the local Shire Council. So for, for the council, um, working on pumps and water plants and pump stations, um, automation, all that sort of stuff. Um, I, yeah, did my time there. Um, then uh, They don't pay you that well, council, isn't no, it? No. Nah, well, I used to yeah, work for exactly. a council myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, that, that was the main reason I ended up leaving that council. I loved the work. It was great diversity of work we did everything microwave links communications great training facility um to learn the skills you need um, so which council was that it was wellington council so we're shouting then. out to wellington council you yeah. were a great workplace you just need to pay him a bit yeah more. well they've, they've been <laughs> amalgamated into dubbo now so now i'm part of dubbo regional <laughs> council so um yeah probably would have never left there if um if we could have got that sort of but um, it was back in the day where essential energy, or well, it was actually country energy back then, were um, the main other people around the place. So I ended up leaving the council and, and spent, I think it was five or six years at, at country energy, then essential energy, um, learning the other side of the fence, I suppose, learning the poles and the wires and all the ins and outs about mm. how the power actually gets to everyone's house. So, so you got the experiences with the end customer, with the council, and actually the or with the whole infrastructure, and then you've got the experience with essential energy to actually know the poles and wires. Correct. So yeah. there wouldn't be many electrical issues coming through that you scratch your head and have no clue how to solve it. Oh, I wouldn't say that there's none. We we there is there is times, but uh, I do probably have a bit more of a broad understanding than most um, sparkies around um, when it comes to that. I do understand the other side, so. Um, instead of it just comes out of the black wire at, into the house, it, I do understand what goes on and and what what other potential issues could be could be could be making mm. issues for no. solar or electrical installations. So when you do solar, what's the whole range of services you offer now? Um, we offer pretty much everything in that renewable sector, um, off grid, uh, on grid, battery hybrid, um, EV charging. Um, yeah, pretty much the full full spectrum. Um, and what is the majority of work in the wider Dubbo area? Is it uh, on grid residential? Um, we we operate in a bit more of a niche. We haven't um, we haven't been the company that's selling the cheap solar system that um, the. That dies in the ass a few years later. Yeah, exactly. We we, we sort of specialised early on in in my in my um, time um, into the more um, premium um, product. Um, the reason for that is we, one of the first two or three jobs that we went to once I got my solar ticket were systems that weren't that old, probably two, three years old, that weren't working and then finding that panels were already deteriorated, they had water in them, that were cracked. Um, and after like not even even probably installed two or three systems and then looking at other systems, I went, I don't want to have this liability on myself in three years' time where I've mm. got to be trying to explain to a customer that something I put on their roof isn't going to work anymore mm. Mm. and that 
it needs to be replaced. Um, and we also found that those companies weren't even in the market at that stage too. So yeah, we couldn't even go back to the panel manufacturer and get new panels and put them on the roof for the customer at a, at a, a pretty reasonable cost. Um, they were just stuck. They had nothing. Um, so, so you, yeah. fi you fixed it with a wrench and took it off. Yeah, it? we we replaced those systems. So they got they got pulled off, and the poor customer paid again. So at that point, I went, you know what? I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna risk um, my company's reputation on mm. on this. And and we went down um, the quality pro uh, product road um, with um, with a couple of big companies. So. I mean, a lot of people who buy solar have got no clue that you can get a system for three thousand dollars, and then you can get a system for six and a half thousand dollars, or even eight thousand dollars in some cases, and they think, "Oh, they look all the same." Yeah. But what's the difference between that cheap stuff and the slightly more expensive? Look, the main difference and 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 the pricing difference is changing. Obviously, the quality of product, the the cells that are inside it, the way it's put together, mostly. Um, the only reason a cell will really fail, um, if it's of somewhat decent quality, is the thing that it's encased in doesn't do its job. Um, so the water gets into it. The plastic cracks and the things plastic like cracks, that. the mm. silicon cracks, the aluminium's not structurally sound. Mm. Um, there's too much flex in in the system. Um, so number one is the products. Um, your inverters. You need a, a pretty decent quality inverter. They're like anything electronic. Um, electronics are electronics. They will fail at some point, but um, a decent quality inverter. Um, but probably the main thing, and I think it sometimes even outstretches the quality of product, is how it's put in and put together um, and not even limited to how it looks and how it's down the wall. It's how it's transported to site, how it's been treated beforehand, um, all of those little things do actually play a factor into how good a quality system you will end up with. Um, Where do you install the installer, uh, the inverter in terms of sun exposure? That's right. So you don't want it on a west, uh, on a northern wall um, or a western wall. If you do, you've got to look at ways of mitigating um, the sun exposure to that inverter, keeping it cool. Um, it, it's like anything... Um, you don't operate well if you're sitting standing out in the sun all day. It's it's going to do the same thing. Um, mm. it, it wants to be in a nicer environment to operate properly. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so I don't get sometimes how people think, oh, this is a $2,000 more expensive solar system. I can't go down that path. Mm -hmm. Because if that system is installed properly and uses better gear mm -hmm. and then lasts 8, 9, 10, 15 years longer, yep. And you make two grand a year out of the system. Mm -hmm. You're potentially making thirty grand more for an initial out investment of an extra two grand. Isn't that able to be explained to customers quite easily? Um, yes and no. If a customer wants to listen to that, um, then yeah, it is. You can. It is. It is in my mind is a no brainer solution. You're, you you go for that better quality system. Mm -hmm. um, but there is budgetary factors, and, and, and sometimes you just don't have the budget to go to that sort of style system. Um, at that point, you can try and look at manipulating a little bit, but... Um, Meaning cutting cutting some fat by maybe using a slightly cheaper inverter? Or? Yeah, that's right, going to a, a different type of inverter. Um, I really don't recommend dropping your panel quality too much. Yeah. Um, um, because that, that, at the end of the day, that panel is potentially going to be on that roof for 25 years. Mm, um, mm. The the payback on on that um, the over 25 years is massive. So um, we find, uh, like on, on a dearer system, you're only probably looking at about a two year difference um, in the overall system life. That. Um, in terms of payback, exactly. Yeah, mm. not exactly. not system life itself. No. because you're looking potentially at two decades longer. <laughs> exactly right. Life. Yeah, and <laughs> look, I, it, it's funny that you say that because when we started installing ten years back, the quality of panel that we were putting on roofs back then to the quality of panel we put on today is immensely different. Structurally, they are just better. Like. Um, Trina two fifties when we were putting them on right at the very start. 
they were nice panels or they felt like nice panels, but you compare those that actually did have issues to, say, the REC 420s that we're doing now, they're not even in the same ballpark of quality. No. Um, mm. the, just the way that manufacturers have actually learnt and built over the last 10 years about what does actually work and what doesn't work is, is pretty, pretty impressive, let's be fair. So when you drive to a customer and you're ready to do the sales discussion and all that, let's mm -hmm. say I'm a customer, yeah. how do you explain solar to me? Um, I just try and have a conversation. Um, I'm pretty much the sales guy for our company, so um, most of the discussions with us. Um, yeah, I just try and explain to customers what I feel is, is a good solution for them. I, um, we, we, we're in a bit of a unique situation where we don't, get to most people's places um, before we get initial pricing at least um, because we operate in a regional um, town we are on Wellington so only four or five thousand people in Wellington um, most of our work and quoted jobs that we quote are one to two hours away um, so initially m my discussions are over the phone with someone um, understanding what they want um, in a system. Are they looking for just literally saving them some, some money on their electricity bill? Are they um, in, environmentally conscious? Are they looking to um, what their outlook on, on, on things are? Because I feel that dictates sometimes what sort of system they will end up wanting down the track. Um, I try and build uh, a system that can be grown into or can be added to or um, can do those things um, down down the track with them. Um, so you listen more than you actually try to push a product onto them? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, look, we all have our preferred products and that's through process analysis, but I don't, I often, I often I say, do you have a panel or a, um, do you have any panel or, or inverter that you've looked at or researched mm -hmm. or um, that you want to look at or try? Um, nine times out of ten, they don't. Um, people just that they want advice from mm -hmm. us on that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I I try and take it as a um, more of a discussion, not as a, as a sales um, type arrangement at. at um, at the very start. I'm not a salesy type guy, unfortunately. No, so. but I mean, I wouldn't actually say unfortunately because I think in your part of the world, people don't want that bull. No, they don't. No, let's be fair. The sale, those pushy sales guys don't get terribly far mm. um, in the country. Yeah. They want the guy who knows how to fix the switchboard. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep, yep. And, and, they, and, they, and they want, I think a lot, a, a lot of people in country areas want to be able to know that there is someone just there that can fix it. They're not stuck, mm, um, mm. and uh, I feel that's a major, major thing. So for local, for local companies. So have you had the um, companies come to into town and make a good price special that looks really too good to be true, and then when it fails, they all disappeared like the locusts flew off all the time. All the time. I reckon I put less solar systems on in Wellington than I do um, than, than other companies do. I, I, I reckon I've probably got 1% of the market share in Wellington itself. And, and But you do 10% of the repairs, is it? Oh, we do all of the repairs <laughs> because they don't come back. Um, <laughs> we're forever, um, forever with, uh, with the bigger guys. I won't mention names, but forever getting phone calls from either of themselves saying, hey, we, got, we put a system on in, in such and such a place and the customer's rang us, it's not working. Can you go and look at it? Um, and we do do it at times, but um, yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it is constant um, with the installs that happen. There is always issues. It, and unfortunately, because of their pricing structure with these bigger guys in the market, it's four hours from a major like Sydney to, to Dubbo, Wellington area. Um, they're not paying installers very much money at all to even drive out there to put it on the roof. So the installer doesn't have a vested interest to put it in at the best of his ability. He's literally trying to just bang it on your roof and get out of there. 
Mm. Um, and it's all those finer details that, that then create the issues. It's it's not hooked up properly. It's not wired properly. They haven't done any checks. They've just literally thrown it on the roof and they're out of there. The tiles done. haven't been ground. It hangs over the gutter. That's There's right. all sorts of issues. Yeah. Look, the simple message for end customers is you cannot get a solar system for 2500 even for $4,000 and get a 25-year warranty that has any meaning mm. because nobody's going to sit there for 25 years on the $150 profit and waiting for a phone call. You have now not entered the solar game. You have actually entered the gambling game. So if you want a quality system, you got to pay a little bit more because the after sales service is very, very important, and that's what gets financed from that little bit of extra profit that you're making and from the better gear because you don't really want to go out there and fix it. Correct, yeah. So how important is after sales service? It's it's massive. Um, we, I'm not going to lie, we have systems that sometimes have issues. Like every installer, in, a solar installing company knows that. They're, mm. they're not 100% bulletproof all the time. There will be glitches in inverter. It's an electronic inverter device. Sometimes it won't operate perfectly. Mm. Um Sometimes there's a there's a hot joint in a cable or something's gone wrong. But um, what about over voltage? Over voltage, we got a massive network issue. Um, regional New South Wales is, is has had a massive over voltage issue for several years now since the solar's really gone gone well, um, and it hasn't been rectified yet. We've been told that it will be at some point, but. Um, the inverters, we're operating at 250 to 260 volts quite commonly. Um, so that's putting extra pressure on the inverters. Yeah, so if yeah, you put a really cheap gear on there that is six seven hundred dollars yep it's not going to last very long is it no they don't it's going to all the capacitors going to burn out etc yep correct the the inverters we, we one particular manufacturer i won't mention them um I, I, I find we have probably a close to 50% failure rate with their inverters when we have over voltage situations mm -hmm. where they have programs and the abilities that they should be ramping off and protecting themselves. It's just, they just don't. So, um, yeah, it's really, it's really and, important for product selection. Um, and, and you know that, so you do yeah. not pick that product That's for your right. regional yeah. we, area. And we don't recommend that product to, mm. to anyone. Mm. Um, mm. Mm. The, the products that our company sell and install are products that we have been putting in for a couple of years um, that we have tried and tested and, and been through sometimes problems with them but understood where their limitations are and – where they where they work really well, and that's the products that we recommend because we know um, they will work. Mm. We can also service them really well too. We understand those products in and out, and there is not any sort of issue with those products that we can't fix pretty much straight away. Um, when it comes to your region, the wider double region, you possibly would have one of the toughest conditions for solar actually in the world because you do have dust. You have really high temperatures. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't necessarily have the humidity, but you also have the long distances for yep. you to travel, yep. so keeping the system up to go. Yep. What are the key points that you pick to select gear? Yeah. Um, with, with solar panels specifically, um, we want really good efficiency. Um, we have plus 45s to minus 5s in Wellington. So we get both ends of the, the highs and the lows. Mm. We don't have the humidity sold issue of coastal areas, obviously, but we have high temperature swings. So um, efficiency of, of panels and, and how they're made, um, um, we're looking for, for manufacturers that support their product, um, that have good supply chains into Australia, um, all of those sort of characteristics. What about their warranty departments? Yep. Um, so 25 years is pretty standard now. Um, we we partnered with REC um, after LG moved out of the market um, because REC were offering a 25-year installer guarantee as well on, um, on their panels for uh, the REC certified people. And that was a good peace of mind, I felt, for my company that um, – even if the panels did have an issue that REC were owning up and saying, well, we're going to help you, help you 
change those panels out um, and, and put them on the roof. I, I think it's a bit of a misnomer in the market that um, if your panels actually do fail and there isn't a warranty claim, a lot of the time, not all of that cost is recouped. They don't, uh, the, some companies don't actually pay um, enough money to go and replace that system on the roof. In terms of the labour component. Correct, yeah. They'll give you a new panel and, and they'll give you a, a nominal fee to go and change that panel, um, but that doesn't cover the cost most of the time. So um, as a company, installer and company that sells solar, we want to be dealing with companies that have that sort of guarantee um, so we, we can be more confident in, in years down the track that we'll actually be helped if there is an issue. So the warranty is actually only as strong as the company that backs it. Correct. So, okay, I'll get really good gear, but can it be still stuffed up by the install? Yes, definitely. Um, so we operate an in, in-house install crew. Um, the reason we do that is we do all our training in-house and our guys um, are taught and are responsible to us directly. Um, I feel like that's important because we can make that decision to spend a little bit of extra time on a particular job. Um, we can go that extra mile and, and my guys actually uh, value um, putting out a really top end job. Um, we've been able to develop a, a culture inside our, our company, I suppose, where um, they will go the extra mile to make something, even, as it, even if it is cost to us, to make sure that that customer gets the better system or the better outcome out of that. Whether it's having to change a particular way of the system was designed on the roof because the guys have come, got to site and realised something else was there. We, we changed that on the fly and, they, and they, we're proactive about making all of those um, um, decisions for the with the customer's best interest at site. Um, uh, and over the years, uh, we, the guys are actually to the point where they're proud to put their name on their, our systems. Um, um, when we go and fix other systems, um, they're shocked that actually people would actually install a system in such a way that has created the issue why we're there to fix it. And, and they, they, they don't seem to have that care factor that we do um, for our for our installs. You're sometimes probably a little bit shyer because you should really throw uh, and, and, and cry this out from the top of the roof yep. because if you go and you find cables run, I've seen it as bad as in, in gutters yeah, yeah. Um, and over gutters mm. and, and, and panels uh, standing up a little bit over the ridge cap and, mm. and those kind of really cut corner bits, silicon all over the roof yep. like a sunscreen yep. over somebody's body. Yep. Um, how do you feel when you come across systems like that? Oh, it, it's sad, and um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's difficult sometimes because you're often going to someone's place that um, they've just paid a fair bit of money for for what they thought was a great investment, mm. and you're looking at it just going, "This is like it's not fair." Like you feel sorry for them in in a way because you're like, like. Uh, you know that they've somewhat wasted a lot of money and there's a lot of money that needs to go into making this okay and, and, and acceptable. Um, That's a difficult conversation. It is. It's not fun. Um, yeah, it's, it's never never nice to say, look, unfortunately, um, to be able to fix this, we have to remove it or we have to pull it all off and, and, and we'll reuse the products, but start again. Mm, um, mm, mm. Reroute the cables so they're properly, they're not in, in dangerous spots in the roof. They're, they're run properly. The systems are actually designed properly. They're, they're not split over multiple faces with no optimization and all of that sort of stuff is, it's still actually quite prevalent and it is disappointing that it has, a, has there's still people in the industry that are just um, literally just taking people for for a ride, I suppose, and, and just, yeah. I think you say taking a piss. Yep, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Let's talk about the positive start of Stoller. Mm -hmm. You said your staff sometimes goes out of the way uh, to help people additionally. Any good stories there? Yeah, look, uh, the the probably the, the biggest thing with my business is my guys. Um, 
if I didn't have the group of guys I got, we wouldn't be where we were. Um, I keep referring back to the country, but they're all country type guys. They're all um, born, um, mostly born in the area, um, so they're good, good, good mates. So it's um, I actually have a father and son team working in our group. Um, their neighbour works for us. Um, they're all guys that. If you go down the pub on a Saturday, they're all at the pub together. Um, they're that type of a, a, a group of guys. So, um, so your installers are a close knit team. Yeah, that yeah. are locals. Yep, they know how to deal with locals. Yep, and want to do the best possible job for locals. Exactly. I, I'd I'd be happy to put my guys up against anyone around the place, and I reckon we'd we'd tail them up pretty easily. So if this would be an installation solo. Installation Olympics, yep. you think your team do pretty well? Yep. You'd be on the yep. podium? Yep. <laughs> we wouldn't be the quickest, but I don't feel like the quickest is an important um, – I don't feel like being quick is important in the in the solar industry. I feel like doing the good job is important. Um, we don't push our guys to do multiple installs a day because I don't feel like that's a good way to create an environment that gets you the best result. Um as far as a business, yeah, I probably want to be making them do three a day. But at the end of the day, if we go and do a good job for a customer, that will, um, in my mind, create a better ongoing business than rushing out and doing three installs a day, um, making a power of money and then not being able to service or fix the mistakes that were made in trying to do that. Mm. Um, no, you want a certain quality. Yeah. I have a saying, I think, uh, you want quality. Remember this rhyme, quality takes time. Exactly right. Yeah, the old quality triangle. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, subbies versus in-house crews. Have yeah. you been tempted to use subbies? No, no ne never never ourselves. We have subbied to others. Um, so we have done work for other companies, not a lot. Um, we, we've only... Um, only a few, um, mm -hmm. but it, it's not something I felt comfortable with um, in the business at, at this stage. Um, obviously, if you could find a good subby crew, mm -hmm. I think there's there's definitely the ability um, to make that work and still have a good um, a good uh, outcome. Um, but I've also felt that. Um, Keep keeping, getting guys that work together well. I th I feel like that's the the, the best way. Um, it, it's it's the other thing too. There's not a lot of availability for subcontractors in um, in our area. Um, if you've got a solar ticket, um, you can put your own solars on the roof and make make them make make more money than you can subcontracting. Um, and there's no shortage of work. Um, like a, there, are the regional building electrical solar. Um, there's a lack of. Um, there's a lack of us really. Um, there's not enough good quality tradesmen available in the region. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just there's just no one there. So anyone that does have a solar ticket selling and installing for themselves, and they're not particularly interested in installing for others. It's the general rule of thumb. The so, quality guys, yeah. So, quite frankly, if I get solar in the wider double area and I can secure you, I'm actually pretty lucky because I'm going to get a quality system that I won't have trouble with for a long time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Yeah, and you're still humble about it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, yeah, I, I'm not a, I'm not a braggy kind of yeah, guy. Yeah, not a braggy kind of guy. I'll um, teach you how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I so, got German background. We brag by nature. Yeah, yeah, our engineers, you should see them at the Humtata drinking competition. Yeah. Lots of bragging. Anyway, let's talk about solar. Anything where, let's say, you go out, yep. somebody's picking the wrong phase on the switchboard, you turn up, and suddenly something needs to be changed that you guys stuffed up, mm -hmm. and now there's more money to be spent. Mm -hmm. Who's going to have to pay for it? You or the customer? We, uh, with our installs, we, we offer a full 10-year uh, installation warranty. So um, obviously your manufacturers have their warranty, so inverters, 10 years, batteries, 10 years, um, solar panels, 25. We offer a full 10-year service on our install. So if it was something that we've done, um, joints, uh, all of those sort of things, we, we fix that. Um, 
we make sure all of our systems are online or as many of them are online as possible. So if someone does ring and have a have a complaint, we can look at it that day right then normally. Mm, mm, we mm. can jump onto the portal and, and look and trend um, what uh, what their system's doing. Um, we, we offer as standard energy meters with our system so we can see consumption data versus um, solar production and that really is beneficial when someone says i don't feel like my system's performing i've got a large bill mm. we can look straight away at the consumption data as well um, to get a pre-air understanding of the solar is actually working perfectly fine but there's something turning on in your house at 10 o'clock at night and taking most of you uh, a lot of power and that uh, and i'm that, using the jacuzzi again yeah the spa is running and you didn't realize it and so mm. it makes it very clear and understanding and we that's in our standard package is an energy meter for that reason um, um the other thing is, is with being online is a lot of our system installs are um 100 kilometers um away so um if, if we don't, if we can't see that data quickly or easily, it does mean that we have to put someone in the car and drive two hours, mm -hmm. um, which is half a day. If we drive to someone and have a look and drive back, that's one technician half a day. He doesn't get more than one or two a day if he's got to be doing that mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we, we have that online. Um, we, we, we have that online to start with so we can see all things, but then we will send a guy to site. If we feel there is an issue, we send him to site. That's a no charge to the customer. The only time it's a charge to the customer is if it's outside of what we did, someone else has been there and done something and we've had to fix it or it, it's something that's not related or caused by what we've done. So they put an antenna now yep. near it and it's overshadowing the solar system and it's affecting yep. the output. Correct. And in that case, you go, well, look, that's not something we did. Correct. But if it's something you guys did mm -hmm. and it now comes through that that wasn't 100%, yep. then you'll wear it. That's on us. Yep. Mm -hmm. I stand by that. I don't I don't feel if you sell something to someone and something you did has created, I, I don't feel like they should pay more. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm selling you a product for that amount of time to do that. Um, mm -hmm. um, and I would do as much as I can, even, even when it comes to... Uh, uh, panel, uh, sorry, inverter and battery warranties. Um, a lot of the time, the inverter manufacturer won't actually pay enough to change that inverter under warranty, but we then don't uncharge the customer any of the extra expense on our own systems. Mm. So um, it, it's a nominal fee to drive two hours um, that doesn't cover the cost of even the driving half the time to change an inverter, that, which generally needs two trips because you have to drive to site diagnose what's wrong okay the inverter is actually faulty we then have to get a new inverter sent out then travel back to site to replace it um, um, and so that's two trips that's two trips and, and the inverter manufacturers might give you 200 bucks for it lucky to be 200 bucks so with with our 10 year warranty we cover that as well so that's um, you don't pay for that service mm -hmm. whereas yeah, if, if we come across someone else's installed system and, and they can't get onto their in installer because they've gone broke or they're not there anymore, um, yeah, we, we actually have to charge the customer, that customer, unfortunately, the balance of between what it costs. Mm. So. so if you buy a system from New South Wales Country Solar, mm -hmm. you get peace of mind. You got peace of mind. That's right. Um, okay. Now, is solar going to make you money? Yes. Explain. So solar um, systems, on, on average, um, the cost to put the solar on compared to the return on the investment you get from the reduction in electricity bill mm. um, is, is well and truly under um, five years m m most of the time. So after that five-year mark, that system has been paid off and you have potentially 20 years of solar panels and um, Ten five years left of inverter capacity, uh, inverter warranty, that that system will actually make you money um, on a decent level. Yeah. On a so decent so level. let's do the math for a minute. Let's say I buy eight thousand dollar system. Yep. Let's say it makes me two thousand a year in savings. Mm -hmm. That means it's got a four year payback. Correct. Now I get another six years till the inverter warranty yep. runs out. So there's two thousand dollars times six. I'm yep. making definitely, which is twelve grand. Yep. 
But then the inverter usually can last 12, 15 or so. Yep. So there's possibly another 10 grand there. Yep. I then replace the inverter, so let's say 1,500 grand Correct. or yep. so. Then I got another 10 years. Mm -hmm. So 10 years times two is another 20. Yep. Plus, obviously, there'll be higher costs yeah. uh, coming for the electricity. So for my initial $8,000 investment, I could easily have 35, 40 in my pocket. Well and truly, yeah. Wow. Yeah. In all of our solar proposals um, that we send to people about um, grid-connected solar system, we actually have that table in their system. So we will ask you for your bill. We will input that bill data into the program that we, that we use, mm. and that will then give you a pretty, it's not 100%, but a pretty good idea of how long the payback period on your system will be mm. and then what it's expected over the next 25 years it will actually generate and make wow. for you. Yeah. Well, better than the bank. It is better than the bank. <laughs> now, batteries. Yes. Batteries are coming. Initially, you used to only sell solar. Yep. Now it's solar and batteries. Mm -hmm. How many customers get a battery now and why? Um, it, two years ago, not many. But um, now we're seeing probably 50% of our systems include a battery. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the reason for that is the pricing of the batteries has decreased. Um, power prices have increased. So the, the economics of the batteries are quite neutral, I suppose, is the word. So the batteries work like that. The biggest thing we find and why people want batteries in our area is um, supply um, availability or security. Um, a lot of our customers have uh, living on a rural network where the power can go out for hours at a time and they want to be able to keep the lights, the fridge, the freezer running um, during those sustained blackouts. Um, so it's energy security that's the motivator, is yeah, it? Yeah, energy security is the main mm -hmm. motivator out our way. Yeah. Yeah, in the city, it's showing off with your Tesla to your trendy neighbour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't have we, that. Not as much. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's not there, but there's definitely not as much. Yeah. Uh, batteries are more for, um, uh, we sell more batteries on the on the premise of su supply security. They, they want to be able to still operate um, to a certain extent while the grid's out. Mm. Um, we had floods last year and there were some guys that had no power for three days. So um, that particular line, we, we sold four or five batteries that week. Because people are like, well, I've just lost a freezer full of meat, and uh, I couldn't do, I couldn't actually operate work from home because I had no power. Mm. They, they wanted a solution that um, could backs, help them in that situation. Backs yeah. them up. Yeah. So I mean, we, we we do forget nowadays without the Wi-Fi, a lot of stuff is not working anymore. Yeah, it's it's surprising how mm. how um how difficult some tasks can get without without an internet connection. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So people nowadays in your region buy a lot of batteries simply because there are brownouts, there are blackouts, they want the backup. Yep. And they don't want to have their freezer melt away in their fridge and all of mm. those things, and that'll save them a lot of money. Yep. Um, what's the return on investment? Are they looking at that as well? It is something that they do look at. Um, there is not every circumstance that there is a, a return on investment. Um, Meaning the battery lasts 10 years and it costs you, takes you nine years to get your money back. Exactly right, yeah. Um, mm. it, there, is, there's, there is circumstances and there is people, uh, people's energy uses habits will dictate whether, how economically viable a battery is to you. If you're, if you're home a lot during the day, um, the solar is way more beneficial and the battery is less beneficial. If you're not home at all during the day and have a much more in, an intensive night load or, or, or evening peak load that in the bulk um, electricity price time, a battery is a lot more financially viable in that, in that instance. It is really a um, case by case scenario. And, mm. and when people ask about batteries, that's something that we do spell out and say to them, look, with your energy bills and what we predict where your power is being used, if it hasn't already been logged, this is what we predict your return on investment with the solar and battery is. Here it is with just solar itself. Mm -hmm. um, so you, they can have a good understanding of, of, of how that works. Um, but we, yeah, we definitely find the motivator is not specifically return on investment on batteries. Mm -hmm. Do you get door knockers in your area? Yes, there is plenty of door knockers around. for solar. Yeah, there's plenty, plenty of plenty of companies door knock regional areas, um, often a town at a time. Um, 
Now, tell me if I got this wrong, but when they door knock, usually the honesty factor is not there that much. It's, <laughs> it's, it's about the sale. Yep. And so I always feel that it's kind of like a bunch of locusts coming into town, chewing away. Yep. Then they come and have 10 systems. They install them quick, bring yep. the crew in, go. Yep. And then you left for the leftovers to uh, fix it again. Is that the situation? Tell me some stories. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what it is. Um, yeah, it's, uh, we, we obviously know that the door knockers are in town again because we'll have customers or potential customers coming in and say, oh, I've just been quoted this for that and mm -hmm. they've told me this. and No more bills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you won't have a bill. Um, and when we actually sit down and go through what they've, like we just say, okay, explain to me what they're telling you and, and telling your, I'd like to get the information out of them first before I say, look, well, what they're saying here isn't correct and this is why um, and actually break it down and explain it. But, yeah, unfortunately, and unfortunately, yeah, there is, it is very common that um, the door knocker will tell the poor old poor old lady up the road that she'll have no bill. and Ever? Ever. It's $10,000 for a 2,000 kilo, two kilowatt system. It's So, with other words, they sell crap but then still charge like wounded bulls, yes, is it? Yeah. So, I, oh I, actually, I actually went to a, a poor customer there once, um, had a system installed, 6.6 .6 kilowatts, two inverters on it, not even not even a five, single five, two separate inverters. Um uh, the system hadn't worked for six months and the company weren't getting back to her. And when I started asking questions about the system, I was just looking at it because there was a, a few red flags we thought was there and we, there was going to have to be works done. Um, and when I started explaining that um, this is what we'd have to do to fix it, she said, I can't believe I've, I've, I've spent $25,000 to put this system on and oh it still needs more God. work. And I nearly fell over. I went... I'm, I'm sorry, did you just say 25? And she said, yeah. Like these guys told me this is the best stuff out there and you'd never have any issues, you'd never have a bill ever again. And I I nearly started crying myself. I just went, oh, like. What was the value of the system? Oh, I, the true value? I reckon probably three. <sighs> yeah, it was, it wasn't even brand name recognisable products. Like there was... Ooh. Yeah, it was. Uh, they were inverters I've never seen before, and yeah, it, it was. Yeah, I actually felt really bad at that point, and um, you, don't, I, you don't do that kind of margin. <laughs> <laughs> I'd only be doing one a month, I reckon, if I could do that type of margin. It's, and yeah, it, it, like. <laughs> How did you resolve such a poor situation? Yeah, look, at the end of the day, it was not even uh, something, it was something very simple. It was, I'm pretty sure it was just a loose wire that wasn't even connected properly in the switchboard. So it wasn't, um, at the end of the day, it wasn't, uh, we fixed it within 10, 10 seconds of being there and understanding what the problem was. Um, I don't think we even charged her for that at that point in time because I felt that bad that, she was, she was done. Yeah, I, I, I was, yeah, to the point where I think I went and sat back sat back down at work and just sat there and said said to one of the guys that was sitting there, like, you wouldn't believe what I just saw and what I've been told. And they're like, oh. And, yeah, I, I felt, I, yeah, it was. Did you have the heart to tell the lady that she got really ripped off or did you just thought there's no point, it's done now? Um. No, I didn't. I think she probably gauged it by my reaction when <laughs> you know, I, I fell over. <laughs> um, I think she understood that. She did say, oh, is that a bit much? And I was like, oh, it's more than I would have expected. And, yeah, I think she I, – I think she. I didn't say, no, you've been absolutely ripped off. Mm. Um, mm. But, yeah, I, I was like, yeah, that's a lot smaller than I, it should mm. – I think it should be. Um, Golden rule – do not buy solar from door knockers. I haven't actually heard anybody buying solar from door knockers mm. who then gave it a five star mm. two or three years later. Yeah. They might have thought that it was all right at the beginning, yeah. but a couple of years later, yeah. inevitably, yeah. issues arise and that's when you're going to get busy. Yeah, exactly. It's Your review should be, uh, the Google review should be five years down the track. That's when they should ask for the Google review on the solar. Are you or have a second one? Are you still happy with 
your five star review of this company. Well, the because other- that will it will change and. Um, Plus, those companies do not use genuine Google reviews. No, yeah. they 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 farm them out to particular countries. Yeah. So if I go with New South Wales Country Solar, what do I get? Um, you get peace of mind. You get um, a good quality system, and you get uh, after sales support. Um, you've got um, us to to call on at any point in time. Um, yeah. So actually, you kind of make the most money because if it lasts the longest, it'll give you the most money. Yeah, we get we get a lot of return customers, and I'm happy to say that most people uh, come back and shop with us again, um, mm-hmm. and and use us ongoing for multiple different um, things. So the next stage is EV charging as the EV industry builds up. Um, I'm confident that we we will be the first port of call for our solar uh, solar customers to come back and help them out with that. And when they add batteries, uh, they call us up and say, "Oh, you put our solar on five, six years ago. It's working really well. We're looking at the battery now, and, and we go in and retrofit a battery in there and, and do that." So, um, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm pretty confident that because of the way our business has been structured that we can help and will continue to help our customers. Um, we're, not a, we're not a one and done type operation. Good. I mean, what most people have to understand now, you pick your solar operator, mm-hmm. it's a 10 year marriage mm-hmm. because yeah. you're gonna go in for the battery, gonna yeah. go with EV charger and down the track, um, yep. and then that, yep. and down the track, maybe even smart home. Yeah, that's right. It's smart it, home. The the way the world is moving towards electrification, it all um, it all intertwines together. Mm. Everything's meshing together, um, mm. Mm. and it's to the point of the solar installer has to be that next level in um, electronics and communications types understanding because the solar inverter is going to have to talk to the battery or the battery inverter and then the EV charger and then the smart home system um, and they all have to talk together nicely. Um, and the time of the washing machine gets into yep. action in the middle of the day to exactly. maximise the solar use. Yep. Yeah, The hot yep. waters are charging once the battery is full and um, you've got excess solar instead of throwing it to the grid for for a little margin, put it into to your hot water tank. Um, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, it's all... It's all becoming the one sort of um, the one sort of industry, I suppose. So then, therefore, you should really have one operator that puts it all together, not hickledy pickledy. Definitely, you'll get the best result. So um, use local. Yeah, use local. Use someone that um, knows what they're doing and going to uh, be around again and going to be here. <laughs> yeah, going to yeah. be here for the long haul. So now here you do off grid. Yes, that's um that's one of our big uh, big things, and my guys love it. So. Um, all of my guys, they actually really enjoy it. So we go out um, four or five hours away sometimes and go spend a night or two out and out in the bush um, or just in another town and, um, yeah, get out and put some off-grid in. What's the attraction of off-grid? Look, the off-grid's main attraction is building a place or when people are building their, their home and they're too far from the electrical network. Um, mm or they don't want to connect to the electrical network. Um, a lot of the developing regional areas, if you're more than uh, 100, 200 metres from a, from a power line, it's nearly too expensive to then get the power line brought to your property um, and connected. Um, and an off-grid becomes a relatively neutral cost option. Um, the other positive of off-grid, and, and it's probably um, people's perception, off-grid used to, people used to think, and I probably still think, that the system can't deliver this amount of energy to run a house normally like you would if you were connected to the grid. Mm. You can't have your air conditioners, um, you can't have pools, you can't have... Um, but off-grid's very much changed from that now. We have systems that um, we've put in where the customer's operating, ducted air conditioning, has a swimming pool. He's putting in a spa right now um, and all operating and functioning off solar batteries and a, and a diesel backup generator um, for when th- there's no sun about. So um, 
soft grid energy is really a viable energy source um, for people when it is too far from from the grid to connect. So. And no power bills ever again. No power bills at all. That's the kicker, <laughs> and that's the one that gets everyone. Um, normally, we we get someone that's coming to us because we do the industrial commercial side. They are oh, we're building a place up here. It's a commoner to the power line. Can you get a surprise to hook us up to the to mm. the power line? And we go, yep. Have you thought about off grid? Is our next question. And they go, oh, not really. We we not sure about it. And I said, well, here's some examples of exactly what you're building now that are running in off grid mode that we've put in. We'll get you the price for both. And when you price them up and um, send them to them, they ring you back and they're like, so it's about the same price. And you're like, yep. I said the only kicker is the off grid system. You don't have a bill until 15, 20 years down the track mm. where you obviously have some equipment replacement and we'll factor that into your pricing scheme. Um, and when, when, when you look at it side by side, off grid is an absolute no brainer in that instance as well. Mm. Um, mm. We actually find our off grid systems are more reliable than the grid is. So people go, oh, but then it'd be unreliable. A properly built one, you, we very rarely have any issues with it at all. You'll have more blackouts with the grid than you will with the off-grid system. Mm. So. Mm. I feel there's a certain passion there with off-grid. Have you got a good story where basically, I don't know, the family has five teenage daughters and you still manage to keep them in electricity? Yeah, um, I don't have anything really good. I, I, I've got a particular customer that we, we, we started an off-grid system for about five, six years ago and they built a nice house. Um, um, and then down the halfway through the build, they decided they wanted ducted air conditioning, so they put ducted air conditioning in. We just, we modified that one a little bit, and then systems up and running quite nicely. Um, a few years back, he bought a Tesla. He rings me, I've just bought a Tesla. How do I charge it? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we went through that process and then did that, and. Um, yeah. Uh, so then you what, you had to add more solar? Yeah, so we added s some more solar, a few extra batteries and went again and um, last year he rings me and goes, I'm putting a pool in. <laughs> Same again. So uh, it's one of those things, as long as you've got a decent installer or, or uh, off-grid system to start with, you can do anything with it. It's not... Um, it's flexible. It's very flexible. So. Um, and as long as you've got a company that's willing to come back. Yeah. That's right, um, and support support what it is. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Come up with solutions when things are. It's it's well and good while everything's all nice and neat and it's straight down the narrow box lane that everything's built for. But when there's things outside um, that aren't specifically what that is for, something that can actually make that then work um, is that's probably where we fall into it. I feel like that's probably our our selling point. We can, we can make most things work in most situations. Um, you sound to me like a guy when there's a typical difficult technical situation arise, yep. instead of you scratching your head and swearing, you actually see it as a challenge. I love it, yeah. <laughs> my wife probably hates it because I sit at, sit at my desk at six o'clock at night researching ways to, to fix someone else's <laughs> problem when I'm not at home helping her with the kids. So. But yeah, I do, I do enjoy that technical challenge i suppose yeah I so do. people are in good hands if they let you do their solar i think so but yeah. not your wife <laughs> probably not my wife no he spends out of hours to yeah. fix your problems <laughs> yeah oh uh, well so. i'd like you and my team yeah. have you seen solar change over the last 10 years i think the biggest thing is is the the amount of solar that we put on now um Back when we f when we started, threes and fives were like five was a big system. Three kilowatt, five kilowatt. Yeah, you're three was yeah. your standard, and five was your big one. Mm. Um, like for the last few years, six six to six kilowatt was your sort of standard size, and ten kilowatts was your bigger ones, and and now we're tens our normal size, and twenties our bigger one, um, and th and that's all coming with with the forecasting and people's understanding that potentially EVs will be their maybe next choice of car or the choice after. Um, batteries are now in, in the market as, and even though they're not jumping on the battery right now, they fully intend to. 
Um, as soon as they get a little bit cheaper, huh? Yeah, I, I, f I feel like the market for batteries is going to explode in the next two years. I, I feel like we're sitting right on that tipping point of, of batteries becoming it, it'll be uh, like it'll become the rare thing. It's like it's rare to have a, a solar. Uh, it's a house to have. It's rare to have a house. It's getting pretty rare to have a house without solar now. I feel like the batteries will be the same thing in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, overall, you do need a battery to get the best out of solar because mm -hmm. with the big solar systems, you're now generating more power than mm -hmm. you sometimes use. Yes. And the battery will be the vessel that'll capture it, yeah, and correct. then you use it at night. Yeah, makes perfect sense. It does, and and when we do our designs, we we I talk to customers about that. Go for the biggest solar system you can afford to put on now, mm. because these are the things you will be adding potentially to your home environment over the next four, five, ten years. Um, and they will take more power, or they will they will they will increase your demand. For for electricity, so you'll want to have a system that doesn't have to be touched or played with um, down the track that you can just use that available energy for. Mm, so, mm. Yeah. Um, is aesthetics important to solar? Like, do you like black panels? Yes, um, our, our standard solar package is black panels, um, black rails. Um, we haven't put a silver rail, I don't think, on a roof in a long time, so. So actually, it is important because uh, mm -hmm. you know it's no. I always say it's no point saving six hundred bucks per quarter and make the house thirty thousand dollar uglier. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So yeah, and and that's all about. It's even the design on your roofs and laying the panels on the roof and making the customer happy with where they're at. Um, we've put solar systems on the south side of roofs because the customer didn't want it on the north side, but they wanted solar, and we went down the process and explained. The cost benefit between having them on the north side and looking at them, or having them on the south side, and and um, you still get not looking decent. at them. You yeah, and he, when we we did the numbers on it and showed him the numbers, he went, "I'm still happy with those numbers. Put mm. them on the back." Yeah, south can so, still give you a good result. Yeah, that's right. Mm. So, mm. Um, yeah, it is it is important. Um, a nicer looking panel. Um, yeah, will make that much difference to a, a nice looking panel laid out nicely on your roof will make the place look so much better. Mm. Um, Do you sometimes go to places where it's all been just hickledy pickledy? <laughs> all the time, yeah. Um, there's so, actually a few in Wellington that um, half the panels are sticking out over the top of the roof because the installer didn't have enough room and obviously the designer had designed it and thought he had enough room. So you literally see half the panel out over the top of the eave of the roof and you'll see the... The three or four solar panels on each other side and the corrugate running around the top of the roof in the open sun. and um, That's going to be a problem in the future. Oh, it's a maintenance nightmare. It's um, And people are very ignorant that they got a headache up the top, is it? Yeah, they wouldn't have any idea. Um, solar uh, DC, um, DC cabling is very important how it's run and 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 um, installed it's the uv protection on the cables for example yeah the cables making sure they they can't be cut uh, vermin can't get at them very easily all of those sort of things are, are massively important and running a bit of conduit across the roof not only does it look terrible um, it's just not good practice. It's not, and, and a lot of those conduits I've seen them after six or seven years. They just become powdery, yep, split, broken, um, allowing water into isolators. Um, mm. Everyone's well aware of what a solar isolator on a roof can do if it's not looked after well. So that's all potential risk. Um, I feel to to that to that company that put that on the roof. It's to the, to the point of negligent, nearly. I feel. Mm. Mm, sad. Now, um, when you finish a job, mm -hmm. you feel like you guys have done a great job. Mm -hmm. Do you take a photo with a customer? Do a bit of celebration? Send him a birthday card a year later when the photo when the system is one year old. How do you actually really show the customer the appreciation of being allowed to work on their house and doing a great job? Yep. So. Uh Part of my team obviously does a handover process with, with the customer and runs them through anything they want to know. Um, yeah, and then um, Kelsey then follows up with the customer um, with all the ins and outs and helping them 
um, with the process of changing over their energy meter um, f- for the for their bill and all of that sort of stuff. So, um, and then we're we're often communicating with our customers um, about anything and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Do you get a lot of uh, referrals and word of mouth jobs? Yeah, um, I'm going to say uh, probably 80, 70, 80 percent of all our jobs are come from someone that has dealt with our company previously. Um, we do have advertising, but I do feel most of our stuff still comes from, and, and it quite often will be on the site and we didn't know it came from a referral and the, the customer will start talking about, oh yeah, I was, um, I saw what you guys did down at and such and such as house and that's where I was, and then I saw your ad and then that's how it comes about. So um, in the country, a lot of, a lot of, work is is distributed and done through word of mouth because people talk to people and if they've had a good experience they say well try these guys out they're worth so Mm, mm. panel position yep is it important or you just whack them on no it's important um yeah you got to have the panels in on the best uh, facing portion of the roof you can um that's not shaded that's not obstructed by a chimney an aerial a tree um it makes a massive difference to what that system will do over its life um yeah it's um it's very important you don't want them too close to the edge so the wind gets under them and potentially tries to lift them um there's a there's a lot of specific uh, details and time we go into to try and make sure we fit we often have um, customers say we go back and say we can only fit six kilowatts on this face and two on this and and they come back oh the other company said they could put eight there and uh, I said oh you can if you push the limits on that but as far as the, the install that's uh, it's it's not it's not technically compliant um, if you do have a warranty issue. Um, you potentially are out of you won't get warranty on that panel because you, it hasn't been laid in the particular s- parameters that that company wants it to be laid in. The clamp zones are clamp out. zones. Clamp zones are big. Um, mm. Yeah. Um, so, so other companies basically just fill the roof. Don't look at the technical aspects that you need to limit the system. Yep. And then you look like um. Oh, but I've given you a smaller system, but why did you do that? Yeah, because you can't really, you can't legally put it on that roof and, and make it a compliant system without. Um, Slightly smaller size. That's right, yeah. Mm. And mm. Some, sometimes on site we have the measure and we've designed it all up and you get the site and you can't get that extra panel and, and that's just, unfortunately we can't get it on there. We're not just going to tack it on the end and do Flap it. in the wind? No. Um, we have the discussion with the customer and we'll review the price or potentially move stuff somewhere else or, uh, yeah, it's... Find a solution. Find a solution, yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. Um, what about shade? Do you have a lot of trees near properties and yep. stuff? Um, yes, you- yes, you do. Um, it is a case-by-case case scenario. Um, a, lot, a, a, lot of, a lot of places don't, but then a lot of places do. Um, What's the solution with shade? So there's there's two ways with shading. It's it's optimization. So putting optimizers under uh, all panels or some panels, and um, um, and or end phase, which is a micro inverter solution. So mm-hmm. just depending on, we play it on a case by case basis, but depending on the type of roof, um, where it's at, the the amount of shading, um, how long the shade's going to be on that roof. How tricky the roof is. A lot of the time, we go to micro inverters or or optimization for simply roof layout because there's the the roof doesn't have a nice flat um, positive as like an aspect ratio roof that, lots that works of, well. Lots of hickledy pickledy gables and yeah, stuff. Yeah, people love the the nice designer roof that makes it very hard for the solar installer to put stuff on. Um, if I had my way, every northern roof would be flat. Same with area. Just build boxes everywhere. Love, love a box roof. <laughs> Makes it very easy for solar. And um, gives you a lot of outcome. Yeah. So mm-hmm. unfortunately, that's not how that works. But mm-hmm. yeah, it, it, it's like a fit for purpose. Um, so yeah, we look at your roof and figure out the best way we can go about it. And, that, and then that dictates the sort of products we will recommend. 
nowadays you do get less money for the feed-in tariff. So mm -hmm. how do you advise customers to deal with that? Yeah, so um, often with um, with that, if they've got electric hot waters, we we look uh, we talk to them about options about having the hot water running during the day um, using. Um, using any excess energy and put it into your hot water. So you're heating your hot water effectively for free. Um, if you don't have uh, hot electric hot waters, we have discussions with customers about air conditioning, setting your air conditioners to turn on during the day, even if you're not home, to pre-cool or pre-warm your house before you get home. So the house can actually be brought to temperature with free energy. Um, Putting your washing machine and the yeah, dishwasher, dishwasher on uh, timers. On, on um, all of those sort of things. The pool pump, making sure your pool pump's running during the day, during the sunlight hours instead of running it overnight, which is, is a common is a common um, common thing. Um, so, so you advise people on that? Yeah, yeah. We talk to them about that all the time. So, um, And if every, anyone, anyone ever has any questions, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. so. You come across like somebody you walk in and you actually really care for a good outcome for the customer. Do yeah, you? I do. I don't. I don't want to be that guy that's just selling or something. I don't want. If 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 my company becomes that way, I don't want to be. I don't want to be that person. I don't. I I've spent hours on the phone talking to people on about jobs that I don't win. Um, to the simple fact is that I'd rather see them get a decent outcome and us not get the work than. They get sold up the raw with the old lady. Um, I'd, I'd I'd rather lose a job and someone actually get a decent system than than then, the reverse. Then, then lie through your teeth, make it all look sweet, and 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 give them the wrong advice. Is yeah, it? exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're very old fashioned. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, I don't know. It just doesn't sit well with me. I, off grid in particular, because your off grid time frames are generally twelve to eighteen months. So I, I can be speaking to someone twelve months, to eighteen months before they're even at a stage to put or put a system in. So um, because half the time they they're they're at the the budgeting phase of this when they're they're starting that initial mm, conversation. Mm, so. Mm, mm. Um, yeah, I, you, you really don't want to get an off-grid system wrong because you uh, are shooting them up no. the creek because yep. you are their power station. That's right. Yeah, you, you're effectively becoming their their grid connection. Mm. So you're their essential energy or their Oz grid or Lot of endeavor. That's that's right. So um, the power goes down. They're ringing you. They're not ringing someone else to say, "Hey, come put a fuse back in." Mm. It's so that's a lot of responsibility. Yeah, it is. It is, and. Um, yeah, I, I I always push product selection with off grid. I feel is much more important. Um, it's much there's I have a much more of an emphasis on saying that this product will be substantially better than this product in mm. this situation. Mm. So, mm. Um, yeah, reliability is key with off grid. Yeah, it's it's always going to be ten o'clock on the Friday night when you got a, a couple over. And f f f for dinner or something, mm. and the lights go out. It's always the most inopportune time that something's going to go <laughs> wrong. Um, so, yeah, go yeah. for quality, and you have less calls. Yeah, we don't have we don't have a lot of calls. Let's be fair. Um, mm. We've mm. got a lot of off grid systems in there, and I we don't get much because they just don't play up that much. Mm. We learn our lesson in the in the beginning, and some products were eliminated, and yeah, it works from there. Yeah. Let's say you got somebody you're walking in and they ask you a very simple question, which is, how do I get a good solar system? Mm -hmm. What's your key advice? Yeah, it's like everything, just quality. Just It's picking, it's picking someone you trust, I think, is, is the biggest thing. Um, because if you trust the person who's going to do the right thing by you and you, you've not just falsely trust them either, actually do some research on that particular person or company. Um, you, you can't go wrong. You've got to have, you got to have quality products. That's just a no brainer. You have got to be happy with who's installing it. So if it's not the particular company that you're buying it off, who is it, where that goes. 
And so you don't trust somebody to sell it to you, to give it to a subby, their subby gives it to another subby, and then mm -hmm. the subby's son's doing the job? That's right, yeah. You don't like that? I, I, no, I don't. I, I feel like if you're, if you're, if you're purchasing a, a, a solar system, you, if it was me, I would want to know who's turning up, who's the other company that's mm. doing that, um, where your liabilities stop between the companies. The, the biggest issue is, in my mind, um, about the reseller subby issue is who's responsible to what point and then who's responsible for for that after a lot of the time and a lot of the issues that we came across is the reseller saying the subby hasn't done it properly and the subby saying well i got paid i did it and they're arguing between themselves meanwhile your collateral damage on the system that's still sitting there not working while they figure out what they're going to do about it um we don't have that issue um, you ring us, our system's not working, someone's someone's driving to look at it or jumping online looking at it and then driving to look at it anyway. So, um, yeah. so New South Wales country solar to the rescue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a few times. Yeah. So. Oh, God. Um, we're getting the EVs coming now. Mm -hmm. How do you believe the EV revolution is going to affect the country, especially around Dubbo? It's going to be massive. Um it's uh, it, it's it's hard it's hard to gauge. There's still uh, the I don't, the country the country philosophy is that that they won't work yet. Um, the proof's in the pudding. It's already there. It's already going to happen. Um, I mean, I believe EV's going to eventually have a thousand k range, and at that oh, point, most definitely, yeah. I, at that point, that uh, the the range arguments null and void. Mm, um, mm. I feel like it's nearly null and void now. Mm, um, mm. Let's be fair. If, if your average, if you look at your average daily commute on a car, um, an EV is is definitely in in the market and viable. Um, May if you're in a two car family, not but maybe both at this stage, but definitely one should be an EV. Mm. Um, um, but yeah, it is. Um, it, it is. It is something that we're probably we're probably a year or two behind our our way um, with the the willingness to um, experiment. Yeah, I suppose <laughs> try it out. My son's my son's fascinated with Teslas. He loves them, and um, he's he's always looking and trying to see a Tesla. And out our way, he might see one a week, maybe two. Uh, we were sitting in our hotel apartment this morning, and um, he's out on the balcony. And he's, he was out there for ten minutes. He, Dad, I got fifteen already. So I was like, <laughs> Yeah, mate, you're gonna see a fair few more down here. Um, so, yeah, it's just a. Um, but you believe that. As we're getting more EVs, then people will get more solar because EVs and solar go hand in hand. It's uh, they're driving for free. That's right. It's energy independence. Um, it's the same with electrification of your house. It's getting rid of the gas. You can't go and make gas. You've got to buy it from somewhere. Mm. You can put a solar system on you and make power. Um, it's that it's that whole transition away from that and and that's why everyone the the solar system sides are pushing i feel like it won't be that far away before new houses you're fully covering the roof every 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 roof space will be covered i don't feel like it's that far away where people that's their mentality i mean they I mean, might even um i hear about solar fences yep i hear about solar in window frames Frame dust, yep yeah. Uh, or even on the awnings over yeah. the window. Yeah. So I think the house of the future will basically think about solar first, yeah. while right now it's all about the hickledy-pickledy roof. Exactly. And yeah. solar is an afterthought. Afterthought, yeah. yeah. No, I agree. It's, it's going to twist around. And, and I feel like EV vehicle to grid is the next generation of, of that too. You, uh, you have your car, it gets charged, you drive the work. Potentially, they have a charger at work. You, you charge your car at work. You drive it home. You plug it in, and you power your house off the car for the rest of the, the night. And mm. So, I if you have like, a blackout, you better get the car out of the garage, plug it in, and back yourself up. Is it? Well, that's right. And when you look at it, like an EV is potentially forty to say a hundred kilowatt hours of battery capacity. A Tesla that you bolt on the wall is thirteen. So you need three Teslas to even be the three Tesla power walls to be at the same as what. Um, a, a, an EV sitting in your, in your garage is so 
Um, so the EVs will be later on the backups for the houses? I, I, I believe so. I believe that's where the market will take us. I, I feel like that's the, the common route is, is that's where it'll end up. Mm. It makes also sense to put more solar onto residential roofs because when you put the big solar farms into Whoop Whoop, yep. all those power lines yep. cost a lot. Yeah. Someone has got to pay for it. Yep. So it makes much more sense to produce the electricity close to where it's going to get used. Yeah, I thoroughly agree with that. Um, uh, so Wellington, where I'm based, we have uh, two farm solar farms already built and online. The third one is... Uh, and and nearly end of the completion now, so probably probably a couple of months away before they start testing, and there's three or four more. So, and uh, how do they send the electricity then to other places? Yeah, it's all back through a big uh, zone sub yard just outside of town, and and sends it back through Transgrid. Back. Big, but they're ugly. Yeah, incredibly and, ugly. And farmers don't like no. them on their land. No, and and as much as I'm in the solar industry, and I love solar. Mm. Solar farms aren't attractive, let's be fair. Um, are they better than a coal-fired power station? Most definitely. Mm. Um, but they're not the best thing. They're not the nicest thing to look at. Putting solar on your house and a battery on your house and reducing your demand on the grid, um, I feel is the most logical way to, um, to achieve what we need to achieve mm. with the growth and, and the needed demand we need for electrification of everything, um, gas and, and, and going away from fossil fuels. So. Right, right. Now, solar systems, uh, panels don't move. The inverters sitting in the walls, do they need any maintenance? <laughs> yes, they do. Um, th they do need to, to be cleaned. Um, not super regularly, but... Um, we get a lot of dust storms and sun showers. You get a shower and a dust storm and, and they're covered. Yeah, they do need to be they need to be cleaned and washed periodically. What um, about safety from cockatoos chewing on cables? And yeah, I, I, I always I always say to people, um, if 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 you feel like um, feel like there's something going on, get it checked. Get it checked straight away. So, um, but what's your interval that you recommend? Oh, look. Uh, Probably three every three years. Um, hmm. Hmm. Uh, I feel now that solar isolators have been removed from the rooftop. Solar isolators have been removed from the industry. There is far less uh, need for maintenance. There's far less uh, risk of there being an issue. Hmm. Um, if you've got a solar isolator on your roof and it hasn't been checked in a few years, get it checked. It's going to be the number one thing that will cause you grief, your system to fail, or something else happen. Basically, it's the safety switch that's on top of the roof yep. that the fire brigade insisted to put on to make it more safer. Yep. But because the UV after a couple of years eats into it, yep. it's actually sometimes the most easiest fail point. So it is, it is so the, the biggest failure point. So the fire brigade actually made the system less safe. Yeah. It's, <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's a, it's a bit of an odd one, that one. They wanted it. They, but now they've learned their lesson after many years. They have. Years. Well, I, think, I think it was – I can't remember the exact, but I think it's like 80% of um, – Rooftop solar fires are all from the isolator, so it's it's, it's so, pretty pretty damning. So the fire brigade has decided that their great idea, which caused fires, should now be removed. Yeah, thank, and it's not thankfully happening. Thankfully, in the new standard, we don't have to put them there, and it's mm, uh, mm, mm. it's um that was a crazy idea. <laughs> but now, would you say solar is safe? So uh, solar is always safe if it's done properly. Mm, mm. Um, if it's installed properly, that you have no issues. It's not going to be a problem. Um, because it's got safety switches in the inverter on yep. um, on the side of the area. Mm -hmm. The panels are now fireproof, so they can't actually yep. uh, burn or anything yep. like that. That's right, yeah. The, the, the fire ratings on everything has improved, and, and they they have. The, the, the industry has moved a long way in the 10 years mm. um, that I've been there. That, Like I said, they just build them better. It's built differently. You, you have no doubt about the quality of the quality products that, that is actually there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, let's say I have booked you in for a solar and battery install mm -hmm. at my house. Mm -hmm. um, 6.30, somebody's rocking up. I don't know, maybe even earlier or later or time. Yep. Tell me the process. What do I have to expect for the day? You stay hanging around for a whole week or what's going yeah, on? Yeah, no, um, most, most installs are one day. Um, just depends on your size. So... Um, 
most of the time our guys are heading out, so they're driving a couple of hours to where you're at. Um, our lead installer will will meet on site and they'll they'll have a look at your roof, go over it, plan out what they're doing, double check measurements, and and have a chat to yourself about um, the ins and outs and any questions. And um, yeah, then the boys get into it, throw the edge protection up, and jump on the roof. And so you put edge protection so that it fall off, is it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, some it's, cheap companies never do that. Yes, it's uh, it's one of my pet hates actually, is and, <laughs> and it's the door knocker type company that come and knock on the door. All those systems get installed from Friday afternoon to Sunday Sunday night. They're, they're a crew that roll in at six o'clock Friday afternoon and start banging out systems. They're all over your roof, um, no edge, no anything. It's No edge protection, you mean? Yeah. No safety rails? Yeah, and, and they do that because work cover's not around. So the work cover guys knock off at four o'clock on Friday. So unless they actually get a call and it's an emergency call, they don't attend until Monday morning. So um, They know the loopholes. They know the loopholes. Uh, look, um, it's all about price, like the edge protection for us. We send – our crews went from uh, three to four. So we send an extra guy because of the extra labour associated with edge protection and putting that up and doing the job properly. So that's a cost that we bear. So when we have people come to us and say, your system's X price and this guy's system's X price, because that's when- half of that. That, half of that price is because we're doing the right steps. We're following the rules that we're supposed to follow as, as a business and the rules that are, are the correct way um, of making you guys safe, making sure the guys will go home that afternoon. Um, it, it's the price of purchasing the right equipment and the right vehicles for the jobs. It's uh, purchasing a vehicle that can carry the weight, can can pull a trailer that's that heavy. It's it's all of those little bits and pieces that, if you're doing it correctly, add up the cost um, of what we do. Um, and and that's where the cheaper system guys that are cutting corners at every cost and doing the cheaper stuff. It's just. And That's less safe. I mean, I've heard of people falling off two-story roofs because there was no edge protection. Yeah. And right. how would you feel if your house was the house where somebody yeah. died because the be the good. cheap operator yeah. was uh, just yeah. cutting corners? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, – yeah. I actually believe in having inspections literally on every system. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, nearly – yeah, I would say that would be a good idea. I, I, I feel like there's issues with that. Um, specifically in my area, uh, in- inspecting every system becomes hard because where are you bringing that inspector from? Um, the distance to travel. Distance and- to travel or they end up using a, a competitor as your inspector. Um, oh, is, is that what happens? That, 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 that they employ? That can happen, yes. Well, that's not really. Um, <laughs> so I do feel like there should be m- – <laughs> This is a tricky one because I have I feel like yes, there should be. I feel like there should be more inspections. But they have to be independent inspections. But it has it, it has to be processed better. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, they, look, I, if you start getting competitors being inspectors, that's not on. It has to be a essential energy employed or something correct. like that yep. who is completely independent yep. and all he does is to double check that it's fulfilled exactly. all yeah. the requirements yeah. and the rules. Yep. Yeah. That's exactly. the way. That's how you get a safe solar system. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I, the the Victorian model is though it's probably not the great, I feel like it is better. There are many less issues in Victoria, I can tell you, mm-hmm. because the cheap door knockers yeah. are now not in business That's anymore. Right. Yeah. They, they, it was just not economical viable yeah. because they had to go back to every job and fix 12 things on it. That's right. The and customer I, I, didn't see it, but the inspector and did. And to me, that's a positive outcome. Mm-hmm. I would much prefer to see that and bear the, the cost or and or issues associated with it. That, that's a far better outcome in my mind. No, it, it's a more level playing field. Exactly. What about heat pumps? They're coming on with the great uh, Gusto mm-hmm. electric heat pumps. What's yeah. your opinion about them? Yeah, I... Um, it's something that we haven't jumped on to much yet. Um, it's something that we are looking at and, and checking and product testing at the moment. Mm. Um, 
it's I feel like it is it is the next stepping stone from from a, it's a stepping stone away from gas again um, and the, and the humble old generic um, electric element hot water system um, so yeah it's um, yeah not something I'm I'm totally totally up to speed with but it is something that we're definitely looking at so. mm -hmm. do you sometimes go in and they just have an old electric hot water tank and you mm -hmm. put a meter in or so so they can use the solar more yeah so depending on 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 the budget with your electric tank we will either just put like a, a a little timer that the customer can then vary what time but mm -hmm. we set it to operate sort of 10 o'clock to two o'clock during the day when the sun is spe specifically on a north facing system where you have a heavy heavy bell curve peak between sort of 10 and two o'clock um, and we'll often put a smaller element in the system so um, it's not going to draw a, a big chunk of money it, it sort of takes that extra grid feed away um, or obviously then um, your hot water diverters so your catch powers and the like is your next step above that um, in in actually um, getting getting uh, free but free hot water free so hot water. so to explain this to the end customer yep. basically you create a lot of so, uh, solar in the middle of the day between 10 and two o'clock yeah on a north and facing system yeah. if you then pop that into your hot water tank mm -hmm. Then uh, uh, that overproduction doesn't go just anywhere for a couple of cents. That's You're right. Instead of sending it to the grid for five cents, it goes into your hot water tank. Um, that you would be normally charging that up at at midnight or ten o'clock at night. Um, Maybe at eighteen, twenty, twenty-five yeah, cents. Yeah, eighteen to twenty cents is mm. pretty common now for for yeah. hot water. So you effectively got a fifteen cents a unit reduction in. Um, cost. In, in cost. Mm -hmm. And you give advice like that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. When you come to customers, obviously, if they're thinking of solar, mm -hmm. sometimes they might just do it for financial reasons mm -hmm. and they actually still don't believe in climate change and all that kind of stuff. Does mm -hmm. that happen? Yeah, yeah, it does happen. Um, there is uh, – people have different levels of um, – I suppose belief in, in in how much the climate is changing and how that is. And um, are you yeah. noticing it in your region that there are changes in terms of rain patterns and all this stuff? I personally, personally, I, I don't think there's enough data to really do that on a on a small scale. Um, <coughs> I I do feel like as a whole we should be doing everything we can to reduce emissions anyway, whether climate change is uh, whatever climate change is I think I feel like we have uh, as as who who we are we should do our best to reduce anything we can into the environment so so as a custodian of the world yeah. minimize pollution exactly yeah um, the, and, the, and you think solar is going to help with that? Solar, solar is definitely going to help, <coughs> definitely. But I mean, cheap solar goes into the tip after a few years. It Correct. doesn't really help. Correct. The qualification on that solar that's actually on the roof for the intended lifespan is exactly going to help. Um, the cheap stuff doesn't. It just goes to landfill um, or, or is now being recycled. Obviously. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I feel like um, there is resentment for renewables in the country still. Because of the way um, politics, have, politics have been involved with it, I mm. feel like if you remove the politics out of it and go and 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 have proper informed discussions with people, I feel like most people are very positive about renewables. Mm. Um, mm. Um, but yeah, the, the, the especially in our small region, we we have a, a run of energy. So in there, and there is a lot of divisive, divisive things going on, um, and I can see the both sides of that argument too. I don't, I don't feel like there's one specifically correct answer. Um, I feel like renewables are to the future, and um, we just got to find a better way. Well, I, I, I hope that they find a better way to facilitate the way it goes forward um, than what's probably been happening at the moment. So. It's always harder to bring the community along mm. with education yep. than actually play politics mm. and pay 
paint scenarios and be divisive. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Because fear is always created in one's head. Mm -hmm. um, they interviewed Hitchcock one time and said, how do you create all this fear on the screen? He said, I'm just only initiating a little bit and people do it in their own head. Yeah, yeah. that's right. So, the you know, so the politics are mm. very smart to be played because if you build something, yep. you can always create the politics of being against it. Yep. Um, it's the yin and the yang. Yeah, correct. And the politicians in Australia should really work a little bit more closer together instead of trying to just score points. Yeah. And give people cheaper electricity bills. Mm hmm <laughs> Correct. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure. I hope you feel the trip to um, Dubbo was worth it. Uh, we really Definitely. got a lot from you. Um, now it's a matter of preparing that material and uh, presenting it to your own community. Yep. Um, and um, really appreciate it. And I think we got the genuine will. I mean, you weren't nervous. You started a little bit, but you really, yep. um, you know, just became yourself. And thank you so much. No worries. Hopefully it was... Hopefully we get enough decent no, stuff. No, 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 no. I'll give you I'll give you a Google star rating now and I'll give you a nine points out of ten. <laughs> That's all right then. All right. Thank you. Want more energy answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators, and find your quality local installers. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell, and check out all our other videos. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.